Steve Paul Jobs, February 24, 1955 to October 5, 2011, an American billionaire, was a CEO and co-founder of the world's leading computer and smartphone company, Apple Incorporation. Subsequently, Steve had some challenges with his partner at Apple and resigned to found Next, a computer hardware and software company in 1985. In the 1990s, Apple had a lot of financial troubles and had to bring back Steve. When he returned, he launched the Think the Friend campaign and released several products until he restored the company to profitability. Apple is currently one of the world's largest tech companies alongside Amazon, Google and Microsoft. In this video, I am going to share with you 9 books recommended by Steve Jobs while he was alive. 1. King Lear by William Shakespeare In the book, The Aged Monarch, King Lear decides to step down from the throne and divide his kingdom among his three daughters. Two of them made speeches of how much they loved him, while the third maintained that she couldn't express her love in words. The king had the third daughter sent away. The two daughters, whom he favored for proving their love to him through speeches, however, turned out to be treacherous. This drove him insane and away from the palace. The book depicts the folly of trusting people based on what they say. The book was full of death and tragedy. But the moral lesson is clear. Action speaks louder than words. 2. Moby Dick by Herman Melville Moby Dick features the captain of a whaling ship, the Pequod and his relentless pursuit of the great sperm whale Christian Moby Dick. One of his legs had been taken by the whale, so he seeks it at all costs. Despite several warnings about the whale, the relentless captain continues to seek Moby Dick at sea. When he eventually meets it, their struggle lasted three days. So many people were killed in the process. The captain in his final stand throws harpoon at Moby Dick, but becomes entangled with the line. He goes underwater with the fish and doesn't return. Steve read a lot. He arrived at the perspectives it brought to Apple through a lifetime of reading. According to the Business Day Financial Post, Jobs' lifelong interest in the humanities gave Apple a human touch. Also, according to Isaac Sin Walter, the president of the Aspen Institute, who wrote Steve's biography, Moby Dick's key lesson is to not become obsessed with a particular goal and lose out on life. This lesson may have been what guided Steve to resign from Apple in 1985 and founded Next the same year. He was able to let go of the fact that he was a co-founder of Apple, even though at the time Apple was competing with IBM for the computer hardware and software market in America. He let go and focused on building something new. This is perhaps why this book comes highly recommended by Steve. It portrays the futility of senseless struggle. Have you read Moby Dick? The book is currently free to download on Google Books. Using Google can however be a bit tricky. To download the PDF, type asterisk Moby Dick asterisk file type PDF on Google. It will take you to the search result that will allow you to download and access the book. 3. The Poems of Dylan Thomas by Dylan Thomas Steve was a big fan of Dylan Thomas. According to Daniel Smith, author of How to Think Like Steve Jobs, Thomas's poems drew Steve Jobs in with its striking new forms and an erringly popular touch. The poems of Dylan Thomas are typically lyrical and packed with emotions. He is known for his popular poems, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, which is widely cited as Steve's favorite. Steve had an ideology centered on creativity. He sought to sell dreams and not products. According to Forbes, Steve Jobs is the world's greatest storyteller, turning product launches into an art form. It is likely that Dylan Thomas's appeal for popular art forms influenced Steve Jobs' techniques on selling tech. Unlike his billionaire counterparts, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, who recommend mostly business and management books, Steve had a deep love for the arts. According to CNBC, Steve Jobs had his engineers engrave their signatures inside each chip in the Macintosh computer. Poetry has intrinsic power to inspire change than other art forms. It is therefore not surprising that Steve would recommend the book of poetry. The poems of Dylan Thomas are also available online and can be read for free. 4. Be Here Now by Ram Das. Steve was an undergraduate at Reed College in the US in late 1972. He spent six months in school before dropping out. After he dropped out, he stuck around on campus and attended classes that caught his fancy. He also started reading spiritual books. In 1974, Steve traveled through India seeking spiritual enlightenment and studying Zen Buddhism. 
According to the Business Financial Post, Steve Jobs and his friends were transformed by reading the book, Be Here Now. The book is structured into three parts. The Journey, the transformation of Dr. Richard Alpert, Ph.D., into Baba Ramdas, from Bindu to Ojas, the core book and cookbook for a sacred life, a manual for conscious being. The book explores spiritual teachings and promotes the view that there are no accidents, the significance of surrender and living in the present. It might not be your regular Tuesday read, but hey, Steve, one of the world's brightest minds in tech and business recommended it. It's worth taking a look. 5. Diet for a Small Planet by Francis Moore LaPay In Steve's autobiography, written by Walter Isaacson, he acknowledged that after reading Diet for a Small Planet, his dieting habit changed. He was recorded to have lived off Roman Mill cereal, dates, almonds and carrots in his freshman year at Reeds College. Steve was historically careful with what he ate. He was known to eat very little and fast very often. According to Max Lugavere, an American journalist, foods that are high in two plant pigments, lutein and zinc xanthin, have been linked to greater crystallized intelligence. Food that has rich plant content can improve intelligence. Steve recommended the book, Diet for a Small Planet, to people as part of the book that had a strong influence on him. Even if you love junk food a lot, reading the book, Diet for a Small Planet, is worth a shot. 6. Mucusless Diet Healing System by Arnold Errett This was one of Steve's favorites. In his book, Prof. Errett explains how a plant-based diet combined with intermittent fasting is the most powerful way to help the human body of illness. In the book, Professor Errett showed that mucus-forming foods are natural for us to eat and are the fundamental causes of many human illnesses. The author healed himself from Bright's disease with a diet based on fruits. Since Steve was very particular about his health and diet, this book would make a great read for anyone looking to understand their body system and how to stay healthy better. 7. The Autobiography of Yogi by Paramhansa Yogananda This book, recommended by Steve, was written by an Indian yoga guru, Paramhansa Yogananda. Steve read it while on a sojourn in India. According to Isaacston, Steve Jobs, after an incident in India in which the book kept him company, we read the book every year. This book is one of the world's most acclaimed spiritual classics. If you want to enter the minds of Apple's pioneer and visionary, reading the book can be a good start. 8. Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind by Shanryu Suzuki After Steve went back from India, his interest in meditation piqued. He started attending Buddhism classes held by Shanryu Suzuki, the Japanese monk who authored Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Steve had a strong interest in spiritual enlightenment while he was alive. His perspectives and tech and calmness in times of trouble may be credited to his state of mind. 9. The Innovator's Dilemma by Clayton M. Christensen This book is a must-read for innovators and startups. In his biography, Steve credited his view on innovation to the ideas explained in this book. According to Steve, it is important that we make this transformation because of what Clayton Christensen calls the Innovator's Dilemma where people who invest something are usually the last ones to see past it, and we certainly don't want to be left behind. The Innovator's Dilemma is certainly a book to read. In conclusion, Steve lived a full life as one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. We can each learn something he did differently by reading some of the books he recommended.